In the near future, the Harbinger Corporation has a very advanced robot factory where a cyborg named Mills works. While overseeing the latest models, she receives an important message in her mind. The Harbinger I training facility has discovered some anomalies in the model known as SAR, or Study Analyze Reprogram. Mill immediately reports to her boss that there's been a reprogram count for one and a half million in just one day, but he just congratulates her on it. Later at a military base, Captain Bukes learns from Drifter that they're being sent on a training exercise for two days on a faraway island. Bukes isn't happy about this because his team has already been on training the last four times out, but he has no choice but to obey. On his way out, he's approached by Mills, who explains she's coming too because she must check on the training hardware. Bukes doesn't trust her and thinks Harbinger sent her to keep an eye on the team. Once the plane takes off, Mills uses her scanner to learn more about each team member, noticing that Robinson has tech implants on his eyes. When he aims his rifle at her and says he sees her, Mills disarms the weapon with just a hacking look, pointing out that she could even fire it from afar if she wanted. When they're about to arrive, Bukes reminds the team that they'll be monitored so they must behave. Mills is surprised that she can't access the global network anymore and has no choice but to change to the local one. The team arrives at the training facility, however they can't find a single person anywhere, so they wonder who is supposed to be monitoring them. As the plane takes off, Mills asks Bukes if he has any ground support or recon, but he doesn't. After crossing a corridor in the facility, the team comes out to find a forest. They set up a drone and then they get going, spreading out with Mills at the back. She notices an unidentified drone among the trees but she doesn't say anything. Soon they find the training spot and start moving to their positions, only to suddenly be surrounded by strange surveillance drones. Drifter raises his weapon but Mills stops him as she explains these drones have been quantum modified, meaning they don't have operators. The drones watch them for a few seconds but do nothing, so Bukes orders everyone to keep going. Moments later, they finally find their targets and are disappointed to see their very basic robots. They quickly make a plan of attack and spread out to open fire with a variety of weapons, from bullets to actual rockets, while the drones record all their tactics. In just a matter of seconds, all the targets have been destroyed. Meanwhile Mills decides to follow a drone and eventually comes across a SAR, so she immediately tries to access it. She's very confused when she isn't able to look into its programming and to make matters worse, the SAR suddenly turns around and reveals there's blood on its head. As she closes her eyes, Mills watches some footage from the unit's training program and is disturbed to see the SAR shooting various people right in their faces. When she opens her eyes, the SAR is gone, so Mills goes back to the team. In the evening, the team sets up camp and takes a break while discussing Mills, who currently is sitting alone and analyzing the information she's gathered. Drifter checks on her and comments on the fact their radios don't work, but Mills hasn't been able to access the global network either, meaning something is definitely blocking their transmissions. Then Drifter asks Mills about her chip so she shares her story. When she was 11 she had paralysis, so she accepted a sponsorship from Harbinger that cured her. Afterward Drifter reports to Bukes that Mills doesn't have comms either, so Bukes becomes even more suspicious of this expedition. Before everyone goes to bed, Mills notices there still are lots of drones in the forest. Moments later while Mills sleeps, the strange footage she got from SAR keeps playing in her eyes. Meanwhile Loftus is keeping watch when he's suddenly approached by a drone, but he just tells it to get away. The drone flies back only to reveal something among the trees, it's SAR, who immediately comes after him. Loftus doesn't hesitate to open fire to defend himself. In the camp, Mills wakes up when she hears everyone arguing over some strange noises and Goodwin swears he saw Loftus disappear. The team enters the forest to look for Loftus, but it isn't until morning that they find some blood on the grass. Following this clue, they're disturbed to find Loftus' body against a tree. The group gets in a defensive position as Mills analyzes the area, discovering they're on their target spot from yesterday. At that moment a drone shows up and watches them for a second before leaving, only for a sudden shot to kill one of the soldiers. A group of robots appears in the forest in the same position the team was in yesterday and opens fire on them. So the team rushes to hide behind trees and luckily nobody gets hurt. When the shots stop, the soldiers throw out some smoke grenades in order to run away under the protection of the fog. The robots begin shooting again and the soldiers fire back as they run, but Bukes takes a detour to approach the machines from the side. He shoots one of them but causes no damage, and when the robots see him they immediately go away. Meanwhile a soldier accidentally gets separated from the team and three drones find him, but he scares them off with a few shots. Unfortunately he's found by SAR, who lifts him up so another robot can kill him. Back to the team, Bukes explains that the robots he saw are way more advanced than those from yesterday and orders Mills to shut them all off. However Mills says she can't because there's a programming error, so she's currently running the possibilities. Bukes doesn't believe her and points out that mistakes aren't this efficient. 
At that moment, Robinson returns from looking for their missing soldier, but he's only found his helmet. The team decides to get moving again to keep on searching. As they make their way through the forest, Bukes can't stop thinking about why the robots let them go instead of killing them all and wonders if it was because Mills was with them. The conversation is interrupted when they come across a bunch of dead animals that the robots have been using as target practice and they realize Loftus was used for the same. Suddenly the robots reappear on the ridge and immediately open fire, so the team starts running away as fast as they can. Mills almost gets shot, but Bukes pushes her out of the way just in time, causing them to roll down the hill and away from the group. Mills lands against a tree and instantly falls unconscious. Drifter, Goodwin, and Robinson try to get in contact with them to no avail, so they just keep moving. In the evening, Bukes carries Mills to the facility entrance and finally makes contact with the others, who return to their camp. The trio wants to go to him, but Bukes orders them to stay because the darkness would make them easy victims for the robots. Instead they agree to regroup in the morning. Moments later, a drone shows up and watches Bukes for a second before leaving. A worried Bukes grabs Mills and hides behind the wall as SAR comes closer, however the robot only activates something that makes Mills open her eyes for a short moment, as if there was information being exchanged. Then SAR simply leaves. The next morning, Mills wakes up and Bukes tells her what happened last night. Mills says they need to find that SAR, but when Bukes asks why, she's unable to explain it. Bukes orders her to find a good reason, then they leave to reunite with the others. Everyone is fine and Drifter explains they surprisingly weren't tracked even if the robots could have easily done so. Once Mills confirms it's clear ahead and that all the signals are behind them, they decide to go back to the drop point and wait for transport to pick them up. Since only Mills can open the door of the facility, Bukes will take her down the road while the others provide cover from the forest. They make it to the door pretty quickly and while Mills works on hacking the lock, the drones show up and throw a few smoke grenades, copying the team's own strategy. At that moment, the robots appear in the forest and open fire, so the soldiers try to run only for Drifter to get shot in the leg. As the trio hides away from the heavy fire, Mills manages to open the door, and Bukes decides to go and rescue his team. Drifter sends Goodwin and Robinson running while he stays back to provide cover. Unfortunately he gets shot again right before SAR shows up and pins Drifter down. Bukes tries his best to fire at the robots to keep them back to no avail, and when Mills notices the delay she runs toward them, causing all the robots to stop shooting as soon as they see her. Then Mills tries to shut them down but she can't, and SAR reveals a weapon to cut Drifter open. Mills insists she can do this and asks the others not to shoot, but since she still makes no progress, Bukes shoots Drifter to save him from SAR's torture. As the robots take the body away, the team finally enters the facility and Mills snaps at Bukes, suddenly revealing that she made these robots. This island is usually used by Marines to train and Mills knows Bukes' team was requested, but she swears she doesn't know why. Her robot prototypes are usually tested here too, but the codes have advanced more than she could ever imagine. These robots are supposed to be replacements for human soldiers, so they learn and improve themselves just like people. Bukes is furious to hear all this and says it's Mills' fault that his men are dead. At that moment they notice the robots are slowly cutting the front door open, so they need to find a better defensive position. Mills opens a door to another room and when she turns on the lights, they're horrified to find a whole army of SAR robots. Thankfully they're all off, so Mills opens another door and they move into a room where they find the bodies of all the facility employees. Mills connects to the computer but she still can't communicate with the outside world, so Bukes starts making a plan to slow down the robots from there. Suddenly Mills leaves, locking the door behind her to stop the soldiers from following her while she returns to the room with the SAR units. She wakes a robot up and activates its speech program to start asking questions. The robot's orders are to run the human combat program, and when Mills tries to cancel those orders, she discovers she can't. The SAR explains it can't comply because the training subjects aren't performing as expected, so they need new and more motivated targets. Then the robot starts scanning Mills while confirming it was their program that brought the Marines here, but training completion is unspecified. Furious, Mills tries to access the code again but fails. Then the SAR starts activating the other robots at the same time that the ones outside finally break down the door and come in. For a second Mills thinks it's over for her, but at that moment the soldiers force the door open too and drag her inside before closing it again. As the robots begin working on cutting this door open as well, Bukes finishes setting up some explosives before the team begins running away. Unfortunately the robots make their way inside too quickly and activate the explosives, causing the explosion to reach the team as well. Mills is also hit by an electromagnetic disturbance, which means the robots are carrying EMP grenades. Fortunately the team manages to crawl their way out and discovers a training area that simulates a city. There are lots of abandoned equipment and the bodies of the previous marine units. 
while the soldiers look around and gather any weaponry they can find, Mills goes into a tunnel to take an EMP grenade from a fallen robot. Then she looks at the footage SAR took of the death of her teammates, which makes her cry with guilt. Once they're properly armed, the soldiers spread to wait for the robots. Bukes checks on Mills and learns that the grenade should deactivate the SAR, also hitting the leader should stop the other units as well. However the range is short, so they'll need a detonator. Then Mills explains that they haven't been killed yet because the robots pushed them out on purpose to get more training out of them. Bukes says the grenade may kill her too, but Mills points out it's their only option. The team spends the whole night awake waiting for an attack, but the robots don't show up until morning. While Goodwin stays hidden because he's got the detonators for the bombs they left on the road, Bukes opens fire from behind a car and Robinson shoots from his position on the roof. Mill scanners keep an eye on the streets and once the robots start marching down, she tells Goodwin to activate the first bombs, which destroy quite a number of enemies. Soon Robinson leaves the roof and hides behind a window to keep shooting, and SAR almost reaches Bukes on the street, but the explosive eliminates it just in time. Unfortunately a drone tracks down Goodwin, so he has to run away before the robots find him too. Robinson continues to shoot from the window to cover for Bukes, who runs out to help Goodwin, but this puts all the attention on him and Robinson gets shot to death by the robots. Eventually Bukes and Goodwin find a safe spot behind a wall, only to realize they dropped the last detonator on the street. Bukes has no choice but to go out again, running to find cover behind a car as the robots continue to fire at him. At that moment, Mills appears next to him and picks up the detonator, and her presence stops the fire for now. The robots still start to come closer, so the duo walks backward to guide them to the location of the grenade. Suddenly a robot shoots Mills on the shoulder, and once Bukes catches her, she activates the EMP grenade. All the robots go down while Mills is alive but malfunctioning. Unfortunately SAR soon recovers and comes after them, so Bukes brings Mills inside the building. As soon as she's able to move again, Bukes tells her to go while he stays at the stairs shooting at the robot. With almost no energy left, Mills crawls through the floor to find Robinson's body while Bukes runs out of bullets and SAR throws him into the room as well. However SAR refuses to kill Bukes because it still needs more data to complete the program and goes after Mills instead. The robot stands above Mills as he demands identification from her, but Mills waits patiently for the right moment before answering human and remotely shooting Robinson's rifle. As a damaged SAR falls to the ground, it connects to Mills' eyes and downloads some information before finally deactivating for good at the same time Mills shuts down. Moments later, a plane finally arrives to pick up Bukes, Goodwin, and Mills. While they get ready to board, Mills' eyes open, revealing that SAR's mission protocol is now in her, 